A little over a month ago, I got myself the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, 14 inch, right? And I made a little impressions video, kind of just explaining how I felt about it at that time for the first couple of days, what I liked about it and everything. And I said I'd make a review in about a month, in a little over a month. And I have a lot to say about this machine. I think this is what has been missing in my tech arsenal. The one piece that I really needed and I didn't even know I needed it. Now I have a lot in that said tech arsenal. Like I have a gaming PC, which I talk about all the time. It has, you know, the 3080. That's what, it's the machine I used to edit all the time off of before I got my MacBook. It was the one I used to edit almost every single video before that MacBook video. And now of course I, st I, st I still use it to game, I still use it to stream because it's Windows. And by the way, I stream on YouTube and Twitch. I, I have a gaming channel called Brian Miller Gaming and on Twitch it's official Brian Miller on Twitch. So if you ever want to interact with me, those are the places to go and I think I'm pretty fun to talk to. At least I hope I am. <laughs> anyway, this is the piece I've been missing my whole life. And now that's very dramatic and that'll be the title of the video, I'm sure, but still, it's what I've been missing. And now let, let me tell you why I love this machine so much. To start off the big list I have, you know, of loving this machine is the design. The design of this thing is really beautiful. I, I love the new fully black keyboard, so even the back is black too, and it just, it looks nice compared to the space gray color that I chose. I know people, a lot of people were saying that the silver color was the way to go and whatever. Same people who said that the midnight color on the M2 MacBook Air was the way to go. It isn't. The darker colors, I think, fit best with the MacBook Pro, just overall design. Now I know, I love me some fun colors. In fact, you're looking at the 14 Pro Max right now, which I just got. It's the I got the purple one, of course, and that review for that phone's coming in really soon because this phone really has upgraded my life a bit and the camera quality, as you can probably tell, is amazing. But besides that, I love me some colors. Like my favorite color is purple. There was a purple pro iPhone, I got it, you know? It's a great phone, great color, and I know a lot of people want colors on the MacBook Pros, but I feel like the more grayish color, while it is boring, it's more pro-esque. If that makes any sense and now that i know that's a lame excuse but hey i think it looks nice i love the space gray color so it's fine with me but yeah the trackpad the keyboard design the screen design now with having thinner bezels and i know the notch is there and it looks kind of ugly but trust me i never notice it i only notice it now because i'm looking at it right now but while day-to-day -day use with video editing anything really i don't notice it and the screen is Gorgeous. I know I talked about it before in the impressions video, but literally watching anything on here just looks so good. The colors pop amazingly. The screen is super bright. Me and my wife love watching The Vampire Diaries, and we watch it either on the TV and our iPad, but my favorite place to watch it is on my MacBook because the screen and the speaker combo is amazing. And we'll get into the speakers, of course, but the screen is great, but we'll get into that. Now another part of the design now is that Apple is allowing more I.O. and more ports into their Pro machines now. So as I said in that last video, you have you know, full HDMI, three USB-C ports, an SD card slot, MagSafe, you know, auxiliary port. All those things are great and each of those USB-C ports have their own um, bus. Basically they get all the bandwidth to each of those and they don't share bandwidth between each other, which is phenomenal. They have the full power of the bandwidth in each single one. So if you have if you have to pull out a dongle or have a super powerful thing plugged in, or you have like a high speed SSD plugged in, that's that's great for that. Now I do know that SD cards, the transfer speed is slow. The only thing I really use it for is to transfer audio if I record audio elsewhere. Most of the time I'm recording the audio through my MacBook now ever since I got this new lavalier mic. But I used to record off of my PC because that's where my desk mic is and that's the best sounding mic I have of course. But usually I record in this little uh, living room studio as I call it. And lavalier like is just of course more freedom. But because of that I plug it into the MacBook Pro and I record there now. So I don't really have a use case for the SD card slot anymore, but I'm sure if I ever get like a more like a DSLR camera at some point in my life and it uses SD cards, well, for whatever reason, that'll be handy in the future, of course. But literally everything else though, HDMI out is great because I can connect it to my displays in my game room. I have th four of them, <laughs> you know, having the opportunity 
and the availability to plug in an HDMI into whatever I want now instead of having to use a dongle, a USB-C to HDMI dongle, is great. It's built in, it's, it's fast. Now I wish it was HDMI 2.1, but I don't have a display that supports 4K 120 hertz or anything like that. So it's more than enough for me. But of course, more options, better options, more better. Let's just go ahead and get into the screen. Now I know I hyped it up a, a lot, you know, earlier, but it really is great. It's a two and a half K panel, I believe. And it's a really sharp panel. It's called, the, of course, the Retina XDR display. But really, I love the branding of Retina because every device that Apple releases that has the Retina branding on it in terms of the display, you really can't see any pixels. And I really appreciate that. I know that you know people got mad at the iPhone XR, the iPhone 11 for having a Retina display, but it was like 836p or whatever. But Literally, my wife had a iPhone XR and it was still plenty sharp, you know. It's retina. You can't tell the difference. But in terms of like this display, it's super sharp. Like I can I watch 4K content on here all the time and it's like super crisp along with the amazing colors. Since it is a HDR panel, it pops the colors, especially in HDR content. And of course, just just the cherry on top having ProMotion, 120 hertz display on a macbook pro i mean, honestly when i first saw the reveal for the macbook pro that was one of the most exciting things for me besides the m1 chip obviously m1 pro chip was the promotion on a macbook it's been a while since any high refresh rate display has been in a mac since like the original imac and that had like a 117 hertz display, which I wonder what happened with that. You know, back in the day, the Mac iMac used to have higher refresh rates than 60, but then recent recent years, it's always been s stuck at 60 hertz. I don't know what really happened there. Now I'm glad that we're back to higher refresh rate things. You know, on your phones, your iPad, your MacBook. Now, it's just higher refresh rates always better. But of course, having this amazing display really helps me with my YouTube content, YouTube video editing, content creation, because I know that I, I can, if I wanted to, I could start recording an HDR content on my phone and I can actually have a monitor, monitor, right? That can fully display those colors beautifully. Now I did accidentally record an HDR. I think it was on the, how to uh, go back to stock Android on a OnePlus 7 Pro. Now I accidentally recorded an HDR because I recorded HDR for the accessories video and I forgot to turn it off. But let me tell you, the color was really popped and it was super bright and I kind of wish I would have stuck with it. But of course, due to, you know, high data. And of course, not everyone has an HDR display at their disposal. So I actively am ruling against it. But hey, if you want to see more HDR content, just let me know and I'll definitely make it for you. But even SDR content, regular standard dynamic range looks great. So overall, I'm really impressed with the screen. Every time I open it up and every time I look at it, I'm just in awe of how good it is. It's probably the best display you can get at this price point, along with the power. All that to get, like this is the ultimate package, I feel like. Com compared to other competitors and they're on the same price point, there's nothing better than this, especially at the price where I got this. I got this at $1,600 on the sale, of course, but I mean, sales will come and go, but even then, Still, at $2,000, which is a lot of money, I'm aware, but this is a super amazing machine. Moving on to the speakers. The speakers, I mean, what can I say? I basically gave you the whole rundown and the impressions. They're great. Not good for bass, but they're great. Like, the high ends and the mids sound amazing, and it's super clear. There's great separation. It's just a good experience overall. Like, I mean, there is still some bass out to some music, so you're not like without bass at all. But the the high end really, the high and the mids really just take over, and it's a, it's a great listening experience for movies, for YouTube watching, for really anything. And I don't really have, I don't have much to talk about in terms of that. And the mics are pretty great too.
Now this is a mic test for the MacBook Pro and they're honestly pretty good. So a regular FaceTime call will sound pretty good. Let's talk about the main reason anyone would or should get this device. It's the chip inside it. The M1 Pro, even at the very base model, which I have, 8 core, 14 core, G 8 core CPU, 14 core GPU, 8, 16 gigabytes of RAM, doesn't matter, it's still, it's, it runs amazingly. Remember how I mentioned before how I used to edit on my PC all the time? And you might think since I have, you know, a 3080, a 10700KF, you know, pretty high end, 32, 32 gigabytes of RAM, M.2 SSD, that everything I throw at it would be butter, right, in terms of video editing. But I don't know if it's just my PC or something, but it still runs choppy when I video edit it. Even basic things like adding two layers of a video on top of each other, it lags. It's choppy. It's almost too much, almost unplayable. And it gets really annoying, you know, because I'm like, hey, I spent, it's over $2,000 piece of equipment that I'm using to edit my videos and it's not doing the job as smoothly and as well as I want it to. So I knew, you know, from past history that, hey, Macs are great for productivity. And I really wanted to try that. I really wanted to get my feet wet and really experience Mac OS and video editing together. So, of course, I have one now, and I've been video editing every single video, either on my TikToks or on my YouTube page, of course, mainly. And let me just tell you, I feel like I can throw 8K at this and it'd be fine, you know? I, I record 4K. Uh, 4K 30, a lot sometimes 4K 60 in certain s circumstances, and there's virtually no lag at all. And let me let me let me show you. Now what I have set up here is four streams of 4K 60 video on both. We're gonna start with the MacBook Pro, of course, because why not? Let's go ahead and just start with play pause. This is the ultimate test. Four streams of 4K 60 video on one timeline. Let's try it out. As you can probably see, that was really smooth. It was 60 FPS the whole way through. Now let's see if this can do the same thing. This is the ultimate test. Four streams of 4K 60 video mm -mm -mm. on one timeline. Let's try it out. It just crushes the PC. It can't handle it. But this on battery power can smoothly. Look at this. Look at this. Full every single one. Every single frame. 60 video there. On one. Unbelievable. The fact that my MacBook Pro, which is portable, I can take wherever I want with me. And it's a 14 inch, so it's like the sweet spot, right? I can take it wherever I go with me and I don't need anything technically. You know, it has a trackpad, keyboard, screen, speakers, everything, you know, built-in storage. You know what a laptop is, right? And I could technically just, you know, record my footage from my iPhone, airdrop it to my Mac, completely edit it, and it can still do it faster than my PC. That is ridiculous to me. So overall, I am just incredibly incredibly impressed with this machine and hey i even threw up a fortnite session and of course fortnite on mac isn't really supported the newest one so they're still supporting like season two chapter or chapter two season four really really old but hey it brought back memories because i used to play that all the time and weeping wood sleepy sound all that stuff was still in there i don't know it just made my war heart warm and it ran pretty okay, you know, it was at solid 60 most of the time, we'd get up to 70 FPS. Of course, that's the lowest resolution, and also it's not even, it's running through Rosetta 2. It's not even supported for Apple Silicon. So, part of me really wants Apple and Epic to fix their differences, just so I can test Fortnite to its fullest capability on Apple Silicon. On here, I think it'd be great, like a great experience, but of course, more people need to support Mac because it is getting up there in the power and if it's fully supported, I feel like it would work great. But other than that, we know Mac isn't for gaming. But for what I needed, and I needed a machine that's super portable and I can take wherever I want to go, whether it be around the house or just out and about, and can edit my footage smoothly and no hiccups. This is what this machine is. And I'm so glad that I have it.
Well, that's all for me today. Thank you so much for watching and please, please, please like the video. If you loved it, of course. If you didn't like it so much, that's okay. You can leave it a dislike and let me know in the comments what I can do better. But follow all the socials. I have a TikTok, I have a Twitch, I have a gaming channel. If you wanna follow those, the link is in the description. So just, if you wanna support me even more, do all of that. But that's all for me today and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.